Hi, this is Shadji and recently I did a video about the guard, how far back does it stretch and how old is it, the earliest depictions. Uh, the video was in response to claims made by Crone Gracie. A lot of people thought I was attacking, a lot of people thought that uh, I'm a Gracie hater, I get this uh, turn thrown in the comment a lot and I understand that but uh, I think it's very important to have a civil discussion and healthy disagreements regarding claims. Uh, Crohn's claims were incredibly erroneous in my opinion that they had to be addressed and all the evidence suggests uh, different to his claims. So I think that we should be able to talk about these things without being called jealous, hater, uh, etc. But uh, one of the things that stood out was uh, a lot of pe the people responded to this video saying uh, the BJJ crafted the guard, it made it playful, it made it into a game and before it was just a defensive position, uh, a desperate position, etc. Uh, yes, the guard game evolved after everything that has to do with, you know, the old Koryu, the samurai, etc. You're not gonna play guard on the battlefield. You're not gonna play guard uh, in the streets. So it had to have developed in a sports-like environment, competitive environment, friendly uh, mats that, you know, are easy on your body. So that's the only way guard games could have evolved. So was it with the surge of PJJ or uh, when it uh, reaches the West with the diaspora, I believe not, because uh, in the accounts of the Hayakawa brothers, uh, the Kanemitsu and Oda going against each other, the invention of the triangle choke, uh, the invention of the knee bar, it was mentioned that Hikikomi was being done so much so that it, it was done more than the actual takedown, so a lot of these fights were going down. Uh, via guard pulling, hikikomi. So, uh, guard game was already a thing back in the 1921-1922 era. So, how did it start? And that's why I'm making this video because this is what history is about, is examining the evidence, connecting the dots, trying to have a discussion with other people and also kind of like an open investigation. So, it's very easy to just come up with, you know, a little bit of information, etc., and compare them against claims. That's very easy. We all do that. But when it comes to trying to find out things like how did guard game become a thing, uh, this is where uh, good and deep discussions arise. And I hope to keep it civil. And I hope that it remains courteous, uh, not just trolling and people just mocking each other and calling each other names because that's not how I want to take the, this channel in that direction. Uh, Crohn's claims are very erroneous and I want to address them and I did. So the same thing with who started playing guard and it certainly wasn't in Brazil. Uh, I believe, you know, like the evidence says that the Hayakawa brothers, etc., in uh, Kobe and Rocco and Okayama and Kanazawa High School, they were all playing guard. But who started this trend? So, uh, their teachers were Oda and Kanemitsu. They were teams going against each other. So, uh, could, it, could it have been one of them? Possible. But who taught these two? These two are, uh, if you want, not even second generation Kodokan, but rather uh, third. They were born in the 1890s, 1891, 1892 to be exact. So, uh, was it them who started it? Uh, that's possible, but their teacher, or at least one of the people who were uh, responsible for their teaching is Hajime Isogai. So Isogai uh, went to Kyoto in order to spread the branch of the Kodokan from Tokyo to Kyoto and started training. Uh, Kanemitsu started at the Kodokan, moved to Kyoto and became a groundmaster. Hajime Isogai, same thing. Uh, Kanemitsu, I'm sorry, Tsunetane Oda. Uh, learned under Isogai, became a groundmaster. 
are you trying to are you starting to see a little trend here everyone that goes to kyoto suddenly becomes a ground master so how did this thing in kyoto being so much involved on the ground become a thing uh in my opinion it's the butoku kai incident with tanabe and the whole thing led to people becoming aware that we need to have more ground grappling it's not a battlefield this is not the streets this is the mats and we can easily fight on the ground as long as standing so if you don't remember in the 1890s uh, in butoku kai in kyoto the dainippon butoku kai uh, tanabe had a competition he went up against uh, kodokan judoka by the name of yuji hiruka the first time uh, Hiruka swept him with Deashi Harai. Uh, Tanabe's head bounced on the floor and he was passed out and Hiruka won by KO. So when someone says uh, the fight should not end with the throw, I disagree. Uh, back then it was very serious. The mats were not like the mats of today. So they had a rematch. Tanabe pulls guard, uh, locks in Ashigarami, which was... Uh, Taught to him by Yataro Handa and other Fuzen Ryu, which is uh, Jujutsu masters, and it's also found in multiple schools and Koryu, and it found its way to Kodokan Judo. So, is Tanabe the first guard player? I believe not, because pulling guard if to immediately lock Ashigarami, that's not guard game, that's immediately going for the leg lock. Um, other, other thing that suggests that Tanabe was not a guard player is the two principles or concepts that he himself uh, claims that he came up with. He came up with uh, the eel restraint. He says that the eel, if you squeeze it long enough, uh, it's gonna slip out. But if you put subtle pressure, you can contain it. Uh, the other thing that he came up with was the snake and the frog, how it slowly envelops it and exhausts it until it eventually goes for the kill. So these two suggest to me that he used subtle pressure top position. He didn't squeeze too hard so they don't slip out. And the whole thing with the with the snake and the frog is that because there's no there's no tough pressure top pressure, he would let them move around but he would follow them, he would exhaust them and eventually goes for the kill so for one one instance that he goes for tomoenage after they fall down he immediately follows them with jujijime or cross choke it's very easy to get mount after a tomoenage if you roll after the throw you can easily uh, get in mount and then lock the uh, cross choke so that all these suggest to me that he preferred top game and leverage and waste a weight distribution rather than playing guard so who started playing guard in 1899 tanabe himself challenges hajime isogai uh, in order to you know compete and see who's the better jujutsu practitioner uh, isogai accepted he took it upon himself to honor the kodokan by beating tanabe because he was beating Kodokan Chidokas, he broke Hiruka's leg with Ashigarami, so it, he wants to preserve the honor of the Kodokan and his uh, grandmaster Jigoro Kano and go on and face the challenge. So he asked Kano for uh, Kaichiro Samura, uh, a younger Jidoka than him, uh, to go to Kyoto, who was also a Neiwaza, uh, skilled Neiwaza practitioner. In order for him to go to Kyoto and help him uh, train so they trained and then uh, they faced each other and during that match Isogai locks uh, a strangle but uh, Tanabe tries to go and walk and crawl towards the edge of the mat in order to have the match reset so here's a few things that we can try to deduct from this instance first of all someone that has a top game uh, as uh, ruthless as tanabe and like pretty much mauling uh, in order to counter it you have to counter it with a good guard that's that's the yin and the yang of the situation good top game you want to counter it with good uh, guard 
in order to not get past and you know get mauled that's one thing and uh, the other thing uh, about this incident is that Tanabe was being strangled and choked yet he crawled and walked uh, and reached to the edge of the mat that suggests to me that he was in uh, Isogai's guard because if Isogai was on top and he was strangling him, trust me, no one can get to the edge of the mat if someone is on top of you and strangling you at the same time, you're not going anywhere. So that just suggests to me that uh, Isogai played guard against Tanabe and this is where the guard game started. Now, when he trained with Kaichiro Samura, it could it possibly be him that taught him guard game? Some might say so, but... Uh, the records show that he asked for Kaichiro Samura from Kano uh, to help him as Uke and not to teach him Neiwaza. So this suggests to me that uh, Samura attacked him with top game and uh, Isogai crafted his guard and played guard and made it playful in order to go and meet Tanabe to finally get rid of him because he was beating Kodokan Judokas. So all of these elements combined you have uh, everyone that moved to Kyoto suddenly became a groundmaster, but before all of them, you had Isogai who moved to Kyoto in order to teach and train, and in my opinion, this is where his interest in Neiwaza started. When he moved there, he saw Tanabe what he was doing in the 1890s, so he decided to get good himself, and this is where, in my opinion, guard play started to become a thing. Uh, connect all these dots together, you see, there's a trend that everyone goes to Kyoto, becomes a grandmaster, but before them there was Hajime Isogai. Isogai became the head instructor in Kyoto. Shuichi Nagaoka was one of these instructors that taught uh, Kanemitsu. And above the head instructor, above uh, Nagaoka was Isogai. So he was indirectly receiving Isogai's uh, directions. Tsunetane Oda, we know his relationship with Isogai and the de development of Kosen Judo, Hikikomi, etc. So the guard game uh, that started, I believe, it started with Isogai. Yes, there was uh, stuff like pulling guard for Ashigarami. There was the guard in order to attack with Yuji Gatame in case you got thrown, etc. But pulling guard and intentionally going into the battle with the guard strategy, I believe it started with Hajime Isogai in order to counter Matei Montanabe's fierce top game. At least these are the dots that uh, are in front of me. I'm trying to connect them because this is what history is. If you watch any docu series on Netflix, like the Roman Empire, etc., you would see that uh, it's all like this: trying to disprove theories, trying to discuss probabilities, a little bit of incidences that uh, may have led to uh, bigger issues. So imagine and. And the Romans, for example, they documented every little thing. And even till this day, historians are still writing books, discussing theories, trying to uh, discredit them or prove them. So imagine how difficult it is to try to find a little bit of information in some remote dojo in Kyoto or Tokyo in the 1800s. Uh, in my opinion, it's even far harder. But if you compare the information that we have, uh, all the people that moved to, T to Kyoto became grandmasters. The head instructor was Isogai. Isogai was uh, very much bothered by uh, two matches that happened with Tanabe. Also, uh, Tanabe was beating judokas on the ground with a far better Neiwaza. Uh, but he preferred the top game. So and if anyone that was going to dethrone him as the best jujitsu practitioner was going to be someone to... Uh, the complete opposite on the ground but on his back with a bulletproof guard and the strangle and trying to go to the edge of the mat suggests that uh, Isogai's guard was uh, very well uh, locked and the strangle was locked and there was no way for him to move other than towards the edge of the mat but if Isogai was on top and uh, was strangling Tanabe there was no way for Tanabe to go to the edge of the mat and trying to reach in order to reset the match uh, it is it is possible yes but unlikely uh, the scenario suggests that Hajime Isogai was playing guard 
So if you have anything else to add uh, to this discussion, please feel free to do it down below. Uh, this was Shadi and thank you for listening.